You don't have to. If your husband dies, getting married again is up to you. Say, so you're free now. You're free. You ain't bound because he's dead and you're free. If you get married again, that's totally up to you. You know, that's, that's, it's no commandment that says you got to get married again. But you can't give your body to nobody. First Corinthians. You got to repent for being married to that second wife because your first wife's still living, Go ahead. Bro brother adulterer. Go ahead. Eh? Go ahead. You got to repent, repent for having that woman's husband yes. because you know that woman, that woman is still living and the first wife of that man is still living mm -hmm. and you that man's second wife. Yeah. You ain't nothing but a spare tire. That's right. Repent. Are you listening? Amen. You're just a spare tire, yeah. and I'm here to take your hair out. Right. I'm here to take your hair out. Go ahead, go ahead. Repent! Then Peter said unto them, Repent! I don't care if you don't like Pastor Jennings. I don't like you either. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That goes for the pulpit. If any of you got more than one wife, you shouldn't be up here. That's right. You ain't fit to preach to a dog in the street. That's right. If there's any preachers up here got more than one wife, you shouldn't be up here. Right. All right, this is what I'm telling you. Right. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost said. Then Peter said unto them, repent. You a deacon mm -hmm. and you got a second wife? Second, yeah. second. You ain't got no business being no deacon. No. You got a second husband, you shouldn't be on no organ, yeah. you shouldn't be on no drums, yeah. you shouldn't be on the choir, Amen. you should be giving up that second meat. That's right. That ain't yours. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Go ahead. I don't care if you're a pastor of a church. Preach it, brother. You got more than one wife? Yeah. You's a disgrace. Yeah. Even God got one wife. That's right. I want to say, God got one wife, it's called the church. The church, the church is the bride. That's right. He only got one. Amen. 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 You know, you know we're living in a sad time when I preach about one wife and people <laughs> look at me like I cussed. <laughs> That's right. Man. You know we're living in a sick time. Well, I preach about having one wife, yeah. and folk look at me like I said something foul. Amen. Because when you live the foul, dirty life, yeah. and then the word come to clean you up for real. For real. Not just play in church. Yeah. If you want to play church, stay home. Yeah. Yeah. It's heaven or hell. There's right. no in between. That's right. You got a second husband Go ahead. and your first husband living, living, you're not a Christian. No. You got a second wife Amen. and your first wife still alive, Amen. you ain't saved. No, you're not, brethren. Give me the seventh chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 7 and we'll start at verse 1. We're working on walking by the same walking rule. The same rule. Same rule. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see the rule of marriage now. Romans chapter 7 and we're at verse 1. All right. No, you're not, brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. Wait a minute. How long does the law have power over that man? Hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. What? For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband. How long? So long as he liveth. Then what? But if the husband be dead. If the husband be in prison. If the husband be dead. No, went blind. But if the husband be dead. Got a bad back. If the husband be dead. He drank. But if the husband be dead. No, dying. But if the husband be dead. What got to happen to him? If the husband be dead, she is loosed. From the law of her husband. Wait a minute. Amen. He, if, if he's what? But if the husband be dead. Then what? She is loosed from the law of her husband. Uh -huh. So then if. If. While her husband. All right, dead, Georgia. Amen. Georgia. Georgia. 
Amen. Amen. Georgia. Georgia. Eh? That's right. Get this now. So then if. If while her husband liveth, while your husband is alive, she be married to another you are man. Married to another man. What did the Bible call her? She shall be called an adulteress. But she's shouting. An adulteress. She's speaking in tongues. She shall be called an adulteress. She's on the choir. An adulteress. She's the pastor's daughter. An adulteress. Your mama. An adulteress. Your wife. An adulteress. Your grandmama. An adulteress. Your sister. An adulteress. The usher. An adulteress. Do you hear the Bible talking? She shall be called an adulteress. The only reason why these preachers won't preach against it, because they got a second sweetheart themselves. That's right. That's right. Now, if there's any preachers up here, and Amen. you got another wife, Amen. and your first wife's still living, Amen. you're not an adulteress, no. brother. You are an adulterer. In James chapter 4. And Give me James 4 and 4. James chapter 4 and verse 4. You, an adulterer is the man. That's right. An adulteress is the woman. That's right. Let me show you this in the Bible. James chapter 4 and verse 4. All right. Ye adulterers. That's the man. And adulteress is. That's the woman. No, ye not. No, ye not. That the friendship of the world. The friendship of the world. Is enmity with God. Glory to God. Amen. Whosoever. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world. You're God's enemy. Is the enemy of God. I don't want to be a friend of the world. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting the world. Fighting the world. So maybe it's all about it, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm fighting the world. That's right. And I'm fighting the world like the apostles fought the world. That's right. And I'm fighting them with God everlasting word. That's right. But that the apostle Paul said there in Romans. Back in Romans 7 and verse 3. Hallelujah. So then if. If. While a husband liveth. While your husband. Listen. While Billy is alive. Amen. While Billy is still living. That's right. Uh-huh. She, she be married to another man. And yet you married to Melvin. She shall be called an adulteress. Every time, listen. Let me make it so plain. If your married name is Miss, Mrs. Black. And the relationship didn't work out between you and Mr. Black. Yeah. And now you got your second husband, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time you are called Mrs. Brown, yeah. you are a liar. That's right. You know why? Black is still living. That's right. Black ain't dead yet. Amen. When you introduce yourself as, I'm Miss Brown, liar. That's a lie. Adulteress. When the members in the church call you Sister Brown and they know Brother Black is still living, the members are liars. That's right. If the preacher addressed you as Sister Black, uh, or rather Sister Brown, and he know your husband, Brother Black, mm. is still living, mm. he lie every time he said, every time you sign the check, Mrs. Brown, you lie. That's right. That's right. You a liar. That's a lie. Well, Pastor Jennings, he beat me. Then the Bible justifies separation. That's right. Because the Lord said he hate divorce. Yeah. Give me the seven chapter of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Follow me. 1 mm. Corinthians chapter 7, we'll start at verse 10. And if there's any preachers that disagree, well, I take your question tonight. Don't wait till I, don't wait till I leave town to start hollering. That's right. You do your hollering while I'm here. That's right. That goes for you out there, too. Amen. Do your holler and your question while I'm here. Yes, sister. Come on now. What if I'm the, the, the child? Mm -hmm. They was married, but the parents signed for them at an early age of 17. And the parents signed for them to be married. When you say the parents signed for them, the parents signed how? At the courthouse. The, so the, the marriage license. Uh-huh. The Bible says, obey magistrates. magistrates. Magistrates is the law of the land. If your signature is on that license, if your name is on that license, the only way that license would not be valid if your name was forged. That's right. Because the Lord said he hated every false way. That's right. <laughs> That's right. The Lord said he hated 
every false way. And the Bible says on the falsehood had they hid themselves. That's the only way that license would not be legit. But if you're in a country where a parent can sign and that don't break the law of that country, then you're bound. Yeah. Because the Bible says obey magistrates mm -hmm. and magistrate is the law of the land. And if there is no law that contradict what was done, then you're bound. That's right. Put them in mind. The Bible says. In the book of Titus chapter 3, we're at verse 1. Follow me in your Bible. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Follow me in your Bible. Titus chapter 3 and we're at verse 1. Says what? Put them in mind. That's what I'm doing. Amen. I want to put you in mind. To be subject. To be subject. To principalities. Principalities. And powers. And powers. To obey magistrates. That's the laws of the land. That's right. Now, we the church of the Lord Jesus Christ believe in obeying the laws of the land as long as they don't contradict God. That's right. When the law of the land contradict God, we are fight that fight law it. tooth and nail. That's right. And you won't get no cooperation out of us. No. If that law contradict God. That's right. Or it take God. But if that law is in keeping with God's law, mm -hmm. then the church got to say, Amen. Amen to it. That's right. All right, question. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Mm -hmm. All right. In order for that second marriage to come to an end, it has to be done legally. Yeah. See, when the Bible speaks against divorce, it speaks against divorce when you're really married. Yeah. If she was your first wife, you can't divorce her. Right. But your second wife, she's not yours. You got to get rid of that which is not yours. That's right. And it has to be done legally. legally. You got to go back to the court and get rid of what is, what is not yours no way. Then the Bible says, save who? Yourself. Then save yourself. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. No, you, you don't have to. If your husband dies, getting married again is up to you. See, so you're free now. You're free. You ain't bound. Because he's dead and you're free. If you get married again, that's totally up to you. You know, that's, that's, it's no commandment that says you got to get married again. But you can't give your body to nobody. First Corinthians. Can't give your body to nobody. Yes, 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 sister. Good. Excellent. I have a friend who's never been married. Okay. No All right. The Bible doesn't give permission to no man live under your roof. And he ain't your husband. You know what the old folk call that? Shacking up. And as a decent and respectable woman, that man ain't your husband. Get him out from under that roof. That's right. For as a decent and respectable woman, you have to be an example to the young women. Get that man from under your roof. That's right. Yes, sir. All right, he want the Old Testament where second wife was allowed in the book of Numbers 15. Well, uh, that's part of talking about when you're doing something in the ignorance. All right, yes. Right, you know, I, I want you to expound on that. All right, which verse start, do you want? I'm going to start at verse number uh, 25. Numbers 15, begin at verse 25. Numbers 15. Numbers 15, we'll start at verse 25. All right, real quick. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel. Yes. And it shall be forgiven them. Uh -huh. For it is ignorance. It, it is what? It is ignorance. Now, in the Old Testament, the priests atone for your ignorance. Right. 
See, in the Old Testament, the priest did it. That's right. We're not under the Old Testament now. No. Jesus came along and atoned for our sins, but now if, when we come to you doing wrong, you got to go. You got to repent. You got to go and get yourself straightened out by biblical order. That's right. See, back then, the priest did it. That's right. All right. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation uh -huh. of the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiven them. Yes. For it is ignorant. It is what? It is ignorant. Yes, it is ignorant. And they shall bring their offering, a sacrifice made by fire, unto the Lord. Well, the only sacrifice now you got to come and offer up is not no lamb, not no goat. It's your body. Your body. For the Bible said, present your body, living sacrifice, holy and accept the one to God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. And it has to be offered by what? And they shall bring their offering of sacrifice made by fire. Made by what? Fire. fire. Oh, back then you had to take fire and light the offering so the fire can consume the sacrifice. And the sacrifice is nothing left but ashes. That's right. Well, we ain't bringing no meat now and getting the match and light it. No. The offering is us, us, and the fire is the Holy Ghost. That's right. And that's come now mm -hmm. through and by the word of God to consume all the wickedness that is in us. That's right. All right. And their sin offering before the Lord and for their ignorance. <coughs> for their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven for all the congregation of the children of Israel. Now, if you didn't know it was wrong to divorce and remarry, you would be forgiven. Forgiven. But when you are forgiven, that don't mean for you to remain in it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you can be forgiven, mm -hmm. but that don't mean for you to remain in it. That's oh, right. Pastor Jim, will the Lord forgive me? Yes, thank God he forgave me. All right, but yet you keep riding back to home with your second wife and second husband. You're still living together. Mm -hmm. You repented five years ago, and yet five years later, right. you're still in the same predicament. That's right. No change. That's right. Uh -huh. And it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel. Yeah. And the stranger that so, that sojourneth among them, uh -huh. seeing all the people were in ignorance. Yeah. And if any soul sin through if ignorance, any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she goat of the first year for a sin offering. You ain't doing all that now. No. No. You 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 sin through ignorance. Now you got to bring yourself. Once you come to the knowledge of the truth of the gospel, right. and one thing about anyone that sin sin wants to be right, and you're ignorant. Give me the 17th chapter. Let's balance that out with the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The 17th chapter of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Amen. Let's balance, let's balance the ignorance out with New Testament. That's right. Amen. Let's make, let's make the apostles and the, ap the apostles and the prophets harmonize. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, and we're at verse 30. All right. And the times of this ignorance. Oh. Go ahead. Oh. And the times of this ignorance. And the time when you didn't know no better. God yeah. winked at. Who did it? God winked at. Oh, God had mercy on you when you didn't know no better, but what? But now. But what? Now. When? Now. When? Now. Never mind the priest. Never mind the offering up. When? Now. Now. Commandeth all men. Now what do God command for us to do? Everywhere. To do what? To repent. When you're ignorant now and you come into the knowledge of the word, now you got to repent. Repent. Everywhere. You got, you got who, how much got to do it? Everywhere. Give chapter and verse again. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. Now when you don't know, now you come into the knowledge of knowing. Mm -hmm. Now he commandeth all men everywhere, everywhere to repent. To repent. So a lot of folk I me mean, say, Pastor Jim, I didn't know that second marriage was wrong. All right, then you cannot be held accountable for what you didn't know. That's right. But the moment you hear it, yeah. the moment you hear it, yeah. that excuse is no more. That's right. The moment you hear it, right then, judgment start come at you. That's right. God hold you accountable instantly. Therefore, right then. Therefore, Romans chapter 3 and we're at verse 1. I get you after. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man. You don't have no excuse. Whosoever thou art the judge. Whoever you are that judge. All right, brother, come on. Yes. Change your belief. Uh. Okay, before I started listening to you, I started listening to you since I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Before I started listening to you, I believed it was okay to divorce. But then I started listening to you, and I believe that what you said, how separate, you can separate, but mm -hmm. you can't divorce. Yes. But in uh, 1 Corinthians 7, when I was reading it, um, my brother called me, and he was, in, he was, I, was I was arguing with him because he said uh -huh. that you could divorce and stuff, but... In reading it again, he went and got the scripture that a man not in the bond is in such cases. No, I, I was reading and I saw where it said, where you where you used to say that you can separate, that mm -hmm. it says let him remain unmarried. Yes. How are you unmarried if you're not divorced? 
Ah, let's go to work in the 7th chapter, the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 10. Yes. And unto the married I command. Yet, unto the married I command. Yet not I. Yet not I. But the Lord. So you can't credit Paul or me or no one else. That's right. What is it? Let not the wife depart from her husband. Hold it. That's right. God is letting you know right here what he prefers. That's right. Well, he preferred not to happen. Let not the wife. The Lord knew that every relationship ain't going to work out. That's right. He's not a fool. Amen. So being that he know every relationship won't work out, just in case something do happen, mm -hmm. he got another law implemented. That's right. So when something do happen, he already got a law that you got to comply with when it do happen. That's right. Uh -huh. Let not the wife depart from her husband. What? But. But. And if she depart. If she do leave. Let her remain unmarried. That simply means don't let her get no one else. That's right. That's all that means. That's right. When she do leave, that simply means to let her get no one else. Yeah. Because she left her husband. Yeah. When the Bible said, left her husband right then that established what kind of relationship she was in. Let she was married. Yes. So when it said, let her remain unmarried, me, don't let her become newly married to no one else. That's right. But what? Let not the wife depart from her husband. I'm going to show you that it proves that she is not delinquishing or get rid of the fact that she's married or. But and if she depart. If she leaves. Let her remain unmarried. Or. Or be reconciled. To who? To her husband. If a marry end, if a marry ended, why would it say if you want reconciliation, go back to your husband? Her husband. Amen. Amen. If she depart. If she's still not married, why would God say, if you want to depart, go ahead and depart, or, or be, be reconciled, reconciled to her husband? He didn't say go back and marry him again. No. He's already her husband. That's right. That's right. It says be reconciled. Reconciled. He didn't say go back and have a ceremony. No. It just said be reconciled. Be reconciled. So the one that tried to justify marriage, they don't know what they're talking about. No. Men that try to justify marriage are men that's after the flesh. That's, that's right. why Paul said, they that are after the flesh do that's minor right. things of the flesh. That's right. Give me the tenth, the tenth chapter of the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Mark chapter 10. Let's see what Jesus said. Mark 10, and we'll start at verse 1. Because this subject always stir up a hornet's nest. Yeah. Eh? Because a lot of folk got to give up that honeycomb and they don't want to. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Eh? Mark chapter 10, we'll start at verse 1. Come on, son. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. Yes. And the people resort unto him again. Uh -huh. And as he was one, he taught them again. As he was one, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him. And said what? And asked him. All right. Is it lawful for a man to is put away his wife? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. Ah. Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, and what? what did Moses command you? Oh, folks love Moses. Yeah. Man, they love Moses more than Jesus. <laughs> That's right. You'll find that so-called save woman. I don't care what you say, Pastor Jennings. I ain't getting rid of my second hug. I didn't write the Bible. No. Don't put it on me because you're living in adultery. That's right. Don't put it on me. That's right. I didn't write the Bible. I wouldn't care if you married a cow or had little cowlets. What would I care? My job is to tell you what the word of God said. That's right. What did it say, son? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command? Uh -huh. And they said, Moses suffered to write Moses a bill of divorce. Suffered you to write a bill of divorce. Notice who let him do it? Moses. Not suffered. God. Moses. Moses let you do it. Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce. God says from the beginning it was not so. Not so. But Moses come along. Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement. One scripture says Moses because of the hardness of your heart. Of your hearts. That lets you know Moses was dealing with the fleshy people. That's right. A hard-hearted people. That's right. Not only that, it lets you know who, what kind of people divorce is for. And Jesus is It's for them that got a hard heart. For the hardness of your heart. For the hardness of your heart. He wrote you this precept. God people not supposed to have a hard heart. Hard heart. God people supposed to have a humble heart. That's right. All right, I get you. Come on. For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. All right. But from the beginning from of the, the begin creation. From the wait a minute, how far? From the beginning of the creation. What? God made them male and female. Uh -huh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. And do what? And cleave to his wife. No, shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his man. And right. cleave to his wife. All right. All right, you Georgia bunny rabbits. Amen. The 
Holy Ghost says. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Shall a man leave father and mother. And cleave to his wife. Yeah. It ain't say cleave to no man and you no. a man. No. Or cleave to a woman and you a woman. No. Cleave to what? To his wife. To his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. They twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twine but one flesh. But what? What therefore God has joined together. What God has joined together let not man. Put asunder. That got your lawyer. That's right. That got your attorney. That's right. Uh-huh. That it, got your pastor. Yeah. What like if, the United Pentecostal and the PAW that tell you so quickly, go ahead and divorce them. Oh, they got more divorce in these churches than centers. That's true. Paul Pitt, three, T.D. Jakes justified divorce. Quefla O'Dollar justified. Benny Hinn justified. Joel Austin justified. Yeah. Fred Price justified. Yeah. Dr. Phil justified. Right. Oprah justified. Right. Every child of hell justified. Yeah. But Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can go in churches and almost every preacher, two or three and four wives. Yeah. And he get up there and lie. I know what God told me. God ain't never told nobody nothing to contradict the Bible. That's right. That's right. Are oh, you listening to the old man? What therefore God has joined together. I want you to get this. You that's jumping and shouting. You know, a lot of folk can't speak in tongue over this. No. Eh? Amen. My God, well, they, they, they start off with a tongue until this tongue. That's right. When this, when, when this come, that tongue gets stuck to the roof. Uh, Amen. Eh? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It gets stuck. Amen. You got these adultery wife trading preachers. They trade wives like someone trade cars. That's true. Listen. What therefore God has joined together. What God have joined together. Let, let not man, man put asunder. Uh -huh. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same manner. What? And he said unto them, mm -hmm. Whosoever shall, whosoever. All right, all right. Whosoever. Georgia, everything in Georgia fall under the whosoever. Whosoever. Whosoever is black. Whosoever is white, whosoever is yellow, yeah. I don't care how old or how young, mm -hmm. the word of God is talking to you tonight. Whosoever. Whosoever. I want everybody to be very quiet and listen. Call chapter and verse. Mark chapter 10, now we're at verse 11. Whosoever. 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 Shall put away his wife. Shall put away his wife. And marry another. What did God call her? Committeth adultery yeah. against her. Whosoever, whosoever shall put away his wife, shall put away his wife, and marry another, and get another one, committeth adultery against her. What if they shout? Committeth adultery against her. They speak in tongues. Committeth adultery against her. They on the choir. Committeth adultery against her. They're the pastor's twin sister. Committeth adultery against her. The pastor's daughter. Committeth adultery against her. If you a preacher, you should not be performing a wedding. That's right. And you know that man got a living wife. That's right. And that woman got a living husband. Amen. And you standing up there talking about a holy matrimony. Holy man. Call it for what it is. Amen. It's an adulterous Adult matrimony. That's right. That's right. Amen. Moment you said it's a holy matrimony, you's a liar. Amen. If you're a preacher, you's a liar. That's right. Whosoever. Whosoever. Shall put away his wife. And put away his wife. And marry another. What did the Bible say? Committeth adultery against her. And. And. If a woman. If a woman. Shall put away her husband. Uh-oh. Got you too, sis. That's right. That's if right. a woman shall put away her husband, shall put away her husband, and be married to another, and you got another, she committeth adultery. Amen. So, therefore, anytime you know a brother that got a living wife, he get married again. Mm -hmm. You know a woman that got a living husband, she get married again. Mm -hmm. When you in the church by the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't say congratulations. No. You don't give them a card. No, no. They don't even go to the wedding. That's right. They don't perform the wedding. That's right. You don't allow your children to be in it. Amen. Because if they do, you strip in the hands of evil doers. That's right. And the Bible says, not he that doeth the wrong, but he that have pleasure. Pleasure. And them that do it. That's right. Yes, sir. If a woman. Listen, 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 listen. 
In Mark chapter 10, we're at verse 12. You claim you're a preacher here. You know your, you know your son first wife is alive. Yeah. That's right. But you love your son more than you love the Bible. That's right. And you are compromised for your weak son. Yeah. Anytime a man compromised for his family, you're not a preacher. Get out the pulpit. Amen. Get out, I said. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. This holy matrimony. You're a liar. You got to call it for what it is. Yeah. All you preachers that's watching around the world. Oh, hey. You know your daughter got married and her husband's still living. Mm -hmm. You got an adulterous matrimony. That's right. So when you stand up there, call it for what it is. Yeah. All of you are here to witness this adulterous relationship. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I pronounce you adulterer and adulteress. That's right. Am I right, I said? I pronounce you adulterer and adulteress. Amen. Go ahead. The moment you say I pronounce you husband and wife, you have lied on God. That's right. Because God didn't call him husband. And God didn't call them wife. She shall be called an adulteress. So you got to call her that. That's right. Well, what did God call a man or what did God call the woman? The adulterers and adulteresses. Go back to the book of Mark. Sound right where you're reading at. Come on now. Amen. Back in Mark chapter 10. Chapter, chapter the book of Mark. And at verse 11. Listen now what did the man Get another wife. And he saith unto them. He saith to them. Whosoever shall put away his wife. Whoever put away his wife. And marry another. And marry another. Committeth adultery against her. He commit adultery. All right. So and, besides saying that's a holy matrimony, let that man know. You commit adultery. That's right. All right. And if a woman shall put away her husband. All right, sister. Mm -hmm. If a woman shall put away her husband. You can be the usher, choir director. You can be the pastor's daughter, the pastor's niece, the pastor's sister-in-law, the pastor's wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can be the pastor, nephew, uncle, grandpappy, twin brother. That's right. You can be the pastor's deacon, yes, sir. little junior jackleg minister. That's right. <laughs> Come on back to Bible, Georgia. Amen. All of Georgia's going to hell. Yeah. I didn't say some of it, all of Georgia. Oh, you man. can attach the rest of the whole state to little Augusta. <laughs> That's right. Well, that gun, if you don't come along and follow the Bible, follow the, the Bible. whole state gonna be dragged to hell. Amen. Are you listening? And if a woman, if a woman shall put away her husband, shall put away her husband and be married to another, ain't no need for no preacher to come after this message and try to butter it up. This is what you are. That's, and if a woman shall put away her husband, ain't no preacher to come after this message to try to butter it up because somebody feelings got hurt. Use a false prophet. That's right. That's right. If this is a thorn sticking in you, you don't need for no one to pull it. Try to pull it out. No. <laughs> because I'm going to stick it back in you tomorrow. Amen. If a woman. Eh? Amen. That's one thing about a false prophet. They're afraid to offend you. To offend you. Because they don't, you know, they, they don't want to do their thing to stop the money from coming. That's right. I wouldn't care if you have made a million dollars a day and gave $200,000 offering and $500,000 tied. i knock you over with the Bible while you got your check and ink pen in your hand. Yes, you would. All right, listen to the old man. Amen. I was made a preacher. Never took a Bible course since I've been born. God opened up my understanding, hallelujah, and made me a preacher. I cannot be bought by nobody. That's right. And I'm not a sellout. Yeah. At all. At all. You're either for God yes, or you're against him. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. What did the holy book say? And if a woman shall put away her if husband. a woman put away your husband. And be married to another. All right, woman, who's that man you going back home with tonight? Yeah. Oh, who, who, who's that man waiting for you at home? That's right. Is he yours? Go ahead. Man. Or are you riding on somebody else's bicycle? Mm. <laughs> are you that desperate you got to have another woman's husband? Go ahead. 
Uh, you that incompetent, you can't get your own. Mm. Uh, you that desperate brother, you got to have another man's wife. That's right. Do you lack so much skill, you can't talk to a sister and get your own? That's right. Do you always got to catch somebody on the rebound? Mm. Hammer. Go ahead. How you gonna speak in tongue and your tongue got a man's throat that ain't your husband? Ain't your husband. How you gonna speak in tongue and your tongue got a woman's throat that ain't your wife? That's right. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. I'm a Christian. You are an adulterous liar. That's right. If a woman shall put away her husband. Here. And be married to another. Here. She committeth adultery. All right. Amen. Let's get having a child mm -hmm. by the other man. Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus. Let's get the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 23. And we'll start at I, verse I, 22. I got to get all of it. All of it. I got to get all of it. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. I got to get all of it. Amen. You won't get me to apologize to you. Oh, no. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesi e Ecclesiasticus, chapter not, 23. Yeah, yeah. Not Ecclesiastes. No, Ecclesiasticus. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sarich. Chapter 23. Chapter 23. And we're starting in verse 22. Follow me. Thus shall it also go with the wife that leaveth her husband. Thus shall it also go with the wife that leave her husband. And bringeth in an heir by another. All right. For first. Hold it. I'm going to read quick. That's right. That's right. You leave your husband. Amen. And you bring an heir by, by another. By Meaning another. you get pregnant by another man. That's right. Now, what category do God put them in? For first. First. She has disobeyed the law of the most high. First. Anytime you and your husband may be separated. But if you get pregnant by another man, first, the first thing you've done, she had disobeyed the law of the Most High. Your act of sex was disobedience. That's right. Your act of sex was not pleasure to God. Yeah. You was hard head. You were stubborn because God says that the woman has not power over her body but the husband. And what you did, you went against that and gave another man your body. Go ahead. Go ahead. First, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. The first one you disobeyed she had disobeyed. was your creator. That's right. Amen. She disobeyed the law of the Most oh, High. He made me feel like my husband didn't. Your act was disobedient. Disobeyed. Bible says she that live in pleasure mm -hmm. is dead while she lives. That's right. For first, first, she had disobeyed the law of the Most High first one you disobeyed was your Lord. Second. Secondly, she has trespassed against her own husband. You get pregnant by another man? Mm -hmm. Strike two. She you has trespassed against your own husband. Mm -hmm. Third strike. Thirdly, she has played the whore in adultery. Right. Amen. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Thirdly, Thirdly, and they complain and say, Pastor Jenna's got a foul mouth. I ain't got no foul mouth. This is the Bible talking. And thirdly, thirdly, she has played the whore. She has played what? The whore in adultery. Amen. Thirdly, God called her a playing whore. That's right. Played the whore. She played the whore in adultery. In adultery. And that, hold it. Mm -hmm. Right then it shows right then. you adultery is a whorish act. That's right. She had played the whore. Right then it's telling you adultery, adultery. is a whorish act. That's right. That's and right. When you're a man, you're a whoremonger. A whoremonger. That's right. A man that breaketh wedlock. Do you hear it? Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23. And at verse 18. You see, most churches ain't never had this teaching since they had a cross on the building. That's right. 
Yeah? That's right. Do you hear the Bible talking? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 23, and at verse 18. Ecclesiastes, 23. Verse 18. 18. I get you, sister. All a, right. A man that breaketh wedlock. A man. That break wet lock. Saying thus in his heart. Saying thus in his heart. Who seeth me? You think you hiding. That's right. Who see me? He, I, he, 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 you, you just left church riding around in your Cadillac all slouched down. Looking. Who seeth me? You Amen. see, God, God know the way that dumb man think. <laughs> That's right. So God recorded in the Bible the way the fool think. That's right. Bible says, out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. Uh -huh. A man that breaketh wedlock. A man that break red, uh, wedlock. Saying thus in his heart. Saying thus in his heart. Who seeth me? Who see me? I am compassed about with darkness. Oh, I'm surrounded in darkness. The walls cover me. Oh, the walls got me here. And nobody seeth Ain't me. Ain't nobody see me. What need I to fear? What need I to be scared of? The Most High will not remember my sins. Oh, that's what you think. Mm -hmm. He, he even tried to pull God in his wrong. That's right. Most high they ain't gonna remember he against God know all things. That's right. And Such a man only fears the eyes of men. That's the problem. Amen. This is what I want people to stop doing. Mm -hmm. Such You're a so busy worrying about what people think of you and you live to please people That's right. and you forgot that your entire existence is supposed to be centered around pleasing God. That's right. That's right. Until the fear of God come back in church, the churches will be a mess. Yeah. Until the fear of God come in the pulpit, they're not going to stand and preach nothing but a mess. That's right. Read quick, and before I get this sister, I need to get my brother back there first. Mm -hmm. All right, read quick. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. Yes. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are, thin, are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. <laughs> Do you hear that? Amen. You ever had anyone break out from prison and throw them spotlights on? Yeah. And everywhere, whenever the inmate run, he always try to stay in the dark, in the shadow. That's right. Until that light hit him. Yeah. That's where folks are. When the truth of God, they was running yeah. until that light of the truth of God hit him. That's right. When the light of the truth of God hit them, that light was so bright, they went running under that woman preacher. That couldn't hide them. Yeah. They went running and tried to duck in some other religion. That couldn't hide them. That's right. That's right. Some of them went and got married again, but that couldn't hide them. Amen. When you run up on God's word, you can't hide long can't as you hide. read. No. All right, hold that thought. Question. Yes, sir. Hey, brother. Uh, one of the things on marriage that we run into down here in Georgia that I have, and I personally ask preachers about this, is that they say, well, when a person gets born again, then all things have become new. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And even though you confront them with this, they'd rather stay in the darkness and be deceived instead of having to go back and tell that brother and sister that he just married wrongfully, and he knows it. That you know, Excellent statement. Let me work on that. This is what preacher yeah, said. Sure, preacher says this. Preacher said, when you was a sinner, and got married, mm -hmm. and one of you come to Christ, yes. the one that came to Christ can divorce right. the sinner companion right. and get himself a new Christian. Amen. You old perverted liar. In the book of 1 Corinthians. Ain't no Bible talk like that, you liar. That's right. That's right. Let's get some Bible to back this up now. 1 Corinthians chapter I'm 7. I'm telling you, a false prophet is the worst thing to follow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get this. First Corinthians chapter 7 and we're at verse 12. I want all you preachers that's listening and watching all the records. We, we're live tonight, internationally. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> and I want all you adultery-loving preachers mm. and you d uh, divorce-preaching preachers yeah. who, who, who so burning in your sad flesh mm. uh, that you want to trade your good year in for Michelin. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because you fellas know the treads is getting too low. Amen. You got to be a child of hell just to follow a man who tell you, preach, you can divorce. Yeah. Any preacher that preach, you can divorce, you of the devil. Of the devil. 
Here now. First Corinthians chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 12. All right. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Give chapter and verse again. First Corinthians chapter 7, and we're starting at verse 12. The rest speak I, not the Lord. Not the Lord. If any brother. If any brother. Not the wife that believeth not. Uh oh, all right. Now, when it says if any, if it says any brother, he's talking about a brother in the church. Right. Huh? So if any brother hath a wife that believeth not. An unbeliever is someone that's not saved. That's right. So if any brother who is born again, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, and he got a wife who's an unbeliever, meaning she's a sinner. And she be pleased to dwell with him. And she wants to stay there. Let him not put her away. Oh, no. Bishop said I can get rid of her and get me a saved one. Let him not put her away. Because you better read that right. Bishop told me I can divorce her and get a Christian. Let him not put her no, away. No, they ain't what? Bishop said. <laughs> Bishop said I can divorce her and get some new meat. Let him not put her away. That ain't what Bishop said. <laughs> Bishop said I can get rid of that turkey and get some prime plum chicken. Let him not put her away. <laughs> Amen. Bible, Bible says, if any brother has a wife, if any brother have a wife that believeth not, that's not saved, and she be pleased to dwell and she with him, to stay there, let him not put her then away. God did not tell you get rid of her. And the woman, and the woman which hath an husband, if you got a husband that believeth not, who's a sinner, and if he be pleased to and dwell he with her, to stay there, let her not leave him. The Bible ain't tell you to divorce him and get you a Christian. Let her not leave him. You bunch of, you see how the Bible contradict preachers? Amen. Amen. I want to soak you while I have you here. Amen.